Welcome to the Primary Storyline, a video series about post-production as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10 motion and compressor. My name is Andrew Gormley, and I will be your host. Right out of the gate, I'd like to thank so many of you for the warm welcome back into the world of Final Cut Pro video podcasting or tutorials or whatever you want to refer to this as. Uh, I've felt the love, so that's huge. The response has been amazing, and now I have so many suggestions for things to cover that were basically good through the new year. So that's great. Keep them coming. You can definitely email me or tweet at me or do whatever, comment on videos. It's all seen. I check it all. So thank you again. In this episode, I'd like to talk about the first non-Apple program we'll be touching on, and as you can see and may have guessed from the video title, I'm talking about Edit Ready from Divergent Media. And these are a few ways you can prep your files before they even get into Final Cut Pro. So nowadays, I find myself shooting with Sony cameras and their XAVC format. From the A7S, these are simple MP4 files, and from an FS5, they are MXF files. Final Cut can edit both of these formats natively on my machine, but when I start grading them heavily or layering effects, I do notice some frame dropping. Furthermore, I find myself shooting more multicam interviews than ever before. Neither the FS5 or the A7S allow for direct input of metadata, which is helpful for Final Cut to know how to arrange your clips. Also, creating a multicam clip in Final Cut automatically initializes a transcode to ProRes so that you're able to view multiple video streams at the same time. This all happens in the background and oftentimes doesn't impede your workflow, but I've found that if I just use Edit Ready up front, I take away a lot of time spent transcoding and organizing later, and I'm nothing if not organized. So with that in mind, here's Edit Ready. Once you launch it, you can just drag a, a drive or a card directly into this main window right here. I happen to have two, so I'm going to drag this one from the Shogun right here into Edit Ready, and you'll see the clips populate right within this main window. You can drag multiple drives here, and all of the clips will appear. So I'll also drag this card from an FS5 here, and the clips will be appended right at the end, like so. So once you have your clips in here, there are a few cool things you can do. First, if you click the down arrow, you'll see more information about your clips, video and audio properties. We can see here that this is Ultra HD 4K, and it has two channels of audio. There is no real name, and the time code is set to all zeros. If we scroll down to take a look at some of the FS5 footage, you'll see similarly, this is also Ultra HD, but it's H.264, and there are four channels of audio. Also notice that it's an MXF file format. If you double click a clip, you'll get a really handy preview window like this that can be resized. One super powerful thing you can do here is apply a preview LUT or lookup table to any log footage you've shot. So you probably noticed that there isn't a lot of color in this particular clip and that is because I shot it in S-Log3. To get a quick preview of what this might look like with a LUT applied, all I have to do is click on this atom and then choose the LUT from the finder window. I'll choose leads. I should note that this does not save the LUT to your clip, it's just a preview. And you can verify that by closing this window and double clicking again. Since I'm really just concerned with the interview footage for this tutorial, I'm going to remove the B-roll. So to do that, what you do is you click on the first clip, scroll down to the end, click on the last piece of B-roll, and then simply press delete. This doesn't delete the original media, it simply removes it from the edit ready window. Now you can edit the metadata of a single clip by selecting it, going to clip, and then choosing edit metadata, or pressing command two on your keyboard. But what I want to do first is add a real name to all of these clips since they were all shot at the same place. To do that, select Metadata from the menu and choose Set Metadata for All. So from the first dropdown, choose Clip. From the second dropdown, choose Real Name. And under Real Name, I'm going to type Tecla Interview and then hit Add. If I use these dropdowns again, You'll see that the real name has been populated for this clip, and this one, and this one. 
The next thing I want to do is set the angle of these clips, but I can't do this uniformly across the board because it's two different angles. The first thing I'll do is select all of the shots in my first angle. So, this one to this one. I will press F on my keyboard to flag them, and you can tell flagged clips because they're filled in like this, not like that. Under metadata in the menu, I will set metadata for flagged. Again, we want to choose clip and angle, and in this case, I'll type head on. I'm going to press F to unflag these clips, select the remaining clips, flag them, and then again, set metadata for flagged. Clip, angle, and in this case, I'll type side angle and add. Now this interview all in was about 45 minutes across two different cameras. The FS7 was recording to a Shogun directly to ProRes. The FS5 was recording internally to MXF format. Now I don't need to transcode the stuff that's already ProRes, but our metadata isn't written to the files yet. To do that, I'm going to select a single clip. So let's just take this second one right here, and I'm going to flag this one. Actually, I'll unflag the other ones down here. So we're just working with this clip. Now, again, I want to reiterate, this is already ProRes, so we don't have to re-encode it. So under Preset, I'm going to select Custom, and under Video Format, I'm just going to pass through. Audio Format will also be passed through. I want to make no change. These files are already perfect. I'm just adding metadata. I've already set up a destination folder called Edit Ready Conversions, and you can optionally name the file here. Let's just go with FS7 Clip 2. Since we only have this file flagged, and I only want to convert that, I'm just going to click Convert Flagged. I want to stress that while this is happening, the video and audio quality is not being affected. All this is actually doing is essentially copying the file but adding in the real name and the angle. Now while that's happening, I'm going to flag the second clip from our second angle. So let's go here, here, and I'm going to flag that and make sure that this one is unflagged. And I'm going to go back to our presets here. And under preset, for the sake of this, let's just choose ProRes 422LT. It automatically sets our video and audio format to be optimum. Again, the destination folder is fine. And let's call this FS5 Clip 2. Now, the FS5 has this weird quirk that, even though it only records two channels of audio, the files it outputs are always four channels, which you could see by toggling this open. Channels 3 and 4 are just silence. It's not a huge deal and doesn't have an effect on file size, but Edit Ready can remove them so you don't have to deal with them at all in Final Cut, DaVinci, or even Premiere. So next to Additional Options, press Edit, and scroll to the bottom, and choose Remove Unused Audio Tracks. You could also optionally change your frame rate, resolution, or even apply a LUT if you know the footage is exposed properly and want to save rendering time later. At this point, I don't want to do any of that, I'll just make sure that Edit Ready is removing the unwanted audio tracks. And then once again, I will press Convert Flagged. Okay, and we're back from time traveling. Our clip has magically jumped from 10, 20% all the way to the end. That's the magic of video editing, everyone. <laughs> so now what we want to do is actually swing over into Final Cut. And we're going to import those two clips that we just uh, transcoded. So here we are, we have FS7 Clip 2 and FS5 Clip 2. So I'll just click those. I'll make sure to leave them in place to save a little bit of space, and I will import them. Now I will select this one, and I will press Command 4 to open the inspector, and you'll see that the real name, Tecla Interview, is carried over, and the camera angle, Head On, has actually carried over. If I do the same thing on the FS5, you'll see that this is Side Angle, and again, Tecla Interview. If, on this same clip, I go over to our audio channels, you'll see that there are only two of them, channel 1 and channel 2. It removed the silent 3 and 4. I'll quickly create a multicam clip of these two, and you can notice that no transcoding will take place. So again, we have our interview clip, and if I open the background tasks, 
nothing's actually happening here for transcoding. This is great because everything's already ProRes. It's a little bit of work up front that saves rendering time later and space since you won't have to deal with both the original files as well as the transcoded proxy or optimized media. As an added bonus, if I edit this clip down into the timeline and then open our angle editor, you can see that the angle names that we've added, head on and side angle, are what we're able to use to cut back and forth between. So that makes it super convenient to know which angle you're on when. And that is a brief overview of the workflow I use for most projects going into Final Cut Pro these days. It saves quite a bit of time to do that transcoding up front with a program like Edit Ready. Thank you for watching! If you found it useful, please give it a good rating on iTunes or subscribe on YouTube as it will help others find and join this incredibly attractive group of Final Cut Pro X fans. Or don't do any of that and just enjoy the free knowledge the choice is yours. If you have any questions or have an idea for something you'd like to see covered, you can reach out via the website at theprimarystoryline.com, email theprimarystoryline at gmail.com, and thank you all for subscribing because now we have a vanity YouTube URL, youtube.com slash theprimarystoryline. Thank you so much for making that a reality. My name is Andrew Gormley, and I will see you all on the next episode of The Primary Storyline.